In this video, I'm going to explain how to create a parallax background effect. This involves using several background images layered on top of each other to give a perception of depth and almost like add a third dimension to the game. So before I get into the code, I'm just going to quickly explain the concept. As I mentioned, the parallax background is essentially just a bunch of individual backgrounds layered on top of each other. So here I'm going to show how this is structured. Now we start off with the game window in this black border and then the first background, which is just a blank kind of olive color. And then from there, you start to add on each of the layers. So first it's the one that's furthest away. And as you add more and more on, you get closer and closer to the screen until effectively you've then filled up the whole depth of the screen. Now you could say, well, why not just put all of this on one individual image? Why split them up this way? And this is where the parallax effect actually comes into it. So when you scroll these background images, we can scroll them individually at different speeds. So the ones that are closest to the player move faster than the ones that are furthest away. And that's what gives this 3D effect. So with that explained, let's have a look at the code. Now I'm going to be using Sublime Text Editor for this. And I've got my Python file as well as my images that I'm going to be using for the background and the foreground. So you need to make sure that all of these images are within the same folder and same location as your script. Now I've written out some of the starter code here just to save having to type it all out. Uh, essentially, it's just starting up my import in Pygame, then I initialize the Pygame module. I define a frame rate just to cap how quickly this game can run because it's quite a simple demo. I don't want it to run too fast. Then I define my game variables for the screen width and height, and I use those to create this game window. Then I just give it a name, and this section here is my main game loop. So I've got my run variable, which I set off as true to begin with, and this meets the condition for this while loop. So essentially, everything within this while loop just keeps getting repeated as long as this variable stays true. So the first thing I do here is just make sure that my frame rate is capped, and then I add in this event handler. So this event handler just looks for one event, which is pygame.quit, and that's whenever I click on the X in the top right. So when that happens, the run variable is set to false, which means that this condition is no longer met and the while loop finishes. So the last thing within this while loop is just to update the display. And if we do get kicked out of the loop, well then Pygame just quits. So it's just all the boilerplate there. If I run this up now, you'll see I get a blank window. It says parallax up in here, just as the caption has been set. And if I click the X, it closes out. So to add in this parallax effect, the first thing I need to do is actually load these background images in. Now there's a few of them here, so I'm going to load them in and add them into a list to make them easier to work with. I'll create a list first of all, say BG images equals a blank list, and then I will iterate through each of those images. I'll say for I in range one through six, BG underscore image is equal to pygame.image.load. And now here, all of these images are within the same folder, so I just need to give their names. Now, the image names are, you'll notice PLX, for, uh, then PLX dash one, two, three, four, five. So what I can actually do here is use this I variable from my for loop, and it will automatically update the variable. So we add an F at the beginning here. So this is something that's added in the newer versions of Python. And this just allows me to take this variable and stick it straight into this string. And at the end, I just add .png to complete the file name. So let's make sure that we add convert alpha at the end to convert the image and maintain the transparency. So once each image is loaded, I need to make sure that the image is added into my overall list. So I'll say bg images .append bg image. Now by the end of this, I will have all of these images loaded in. So let's just run it, make sure there's no errors. So that's fine, it's loading the images, but now I need to actually draw them on the screen. So let's create a function for that. Say define draw underscore BG. It doesn't take any arguments. Now within here, again, because I have this list, I can just iterate through it. I'll say for I and BG images, we'll blit them onto the screen one by one. Say screen dot blit. The image I want to blit is I, not I am, I, because that's what I'm iterating through. And then the coordinate's going to be zero, zero. So each one of the images is going to be laid over the other at this coordinate. So now that this is defined, let's go into the game loop and underneath this uh, FPS section, let's just say draw world and call that draw BG function. 
So when I run this up, you can see that the images have been loaded in and they're overlaid on top of each other correctly. So you'll remember from before, each of these is actually a different layer. So each depth of trees is a different image. Now, they aren't actually big enough to fit the screen. So that's why there's this black area on the right hand side. So what I need to do is take a whole bunch of these and draw them next to each other just so I can actually have something to scroll through. So before I can add any images next to each other, I first of all need to know how wide each of these images actually is. So just underneath my initial for loop where I'm loading the images in, I'm going to take one of them and I'm going to work out its width. It doesn't matter which one because they're all the same width. So we'll take the list and we'll just take the first value from it and we'll say get width. So now I know how wide the images are and I can update this section here within draw background to increase the number of times I'm drawing this. So at the moment, this for loop is only repeated one time. So essentially it takes all of these images, draws them on top of each other, but I want to do this over and over. And each time I want to move to the right by the width of the image. So I'm going to add another loop here. So I'll say for X in range, I'm just going to pick an arbitrary number of five. That's how many times I want to redraw those background tiles. So let's indent all of this. And now I'm going to use this X variable to replace this zero. So I'm going to get rid of that and I will say X multiplied by my background width. So with each iteration of X, I'm going to move one image width across. So if I run this again, you'll see that it's filled in. So it looks like it's a longer image, but actually this here is just what you're seeing on the side here. So it's just taking the same image and put it next to each other on the right hand side. So now let's add in some actual scrolling left and right. To do that, I first of all need to define a new variable. So let's do that before we load in all the images. So just up here, I will say define game variables. And the one I need is scroll. I will set that to zero to begin with. I'm going to change the scroll variable with uh, the left and right arrow keys. So I could add it into my event handler, but just to keep things a bit quicker, I'm just going to add another section for handling key presses. So I'll add a comment here to say get key presses. And I'll say key equals pygame.key.get underscore pressed. So this will tell me which key has been pressed. And then I can look through them to see if it's the one that I need. So if key pygame.k underscore left. So notice this is in capitals. If the left key has been pressed, then let's change that scroll value and decrease it by five because we're scrolling to the left. So the X coordinate is decreasing. Now, if we are pressing the right arrow key on the keyboard and the scroll value is increased by five. So that's fine. I've now got this scroll value that's going to be changing left and right or up and down. I need to now use this within the draw background function. So here where I'm setting my X coordinate, after I work out how far apart I want them to space, I then want to add in this scroll variable. So now if I run this again and I press right, you can see everything is scrolling. So the images move to the left, but the game itself is, is moving to the right, essentially. So we're moving past the background and I can do the same to go back to the left. So right now I've got the images in the background scrolling, but it's not actually giving me any parallax effect. So all of these images are just static. And you notice actually I've gone off the end of the images here. So what I want to do is add a little limit to make sure that I can't do that. So we can only go left if scroll is greater than zero. And we can only keep going right if scroll is less than say 3000. So this will stop me going off the ends of the screen. Yeah, there we go. So all that's left for adding in this parallax effect is just a couple more lines. Essentially where I'm drawing these background images here, I just need to draw them at different speeds relative to each other. So within this first for loop, I'm going to add an extra variable and I'll set this to one. And this variable is going to be reset at each iteration of this loop. So that's why I've nested it inside it. And now I can take the speed variable and I can add it into this X coordinate here. So when I say X times BG with minus scroll, I'll say minus scroll multiplied by speed. So this scroll variable is actually going to be adjusted based on the speed that I want each image to move at. So if I run this now, nothing changes because the speed variable is one. So all of them are moving at the same speed as before. But now what I can do, remember these images are drawn from back to front. So the furthest away is drawn first, and then all of the images are laid on top of each other until we get to the front. So if I simply increase the speed at each iteration, 
then that means that each image that's loaded in is going to be loaded in a little bit further over. So as I now move, you'll see that the ones that are closest to the player are moving faster than the ones that are at the back. And this is what gives you this 3D effect. And you can see actually now I've gone off the edge of them and you can see the offset between them. This is because of that speed variable. So when I move back to the left, it's going in the opposite direction. And just to complete this, I could also add that foreground here as well. So at the moment it's just showing me the background, but I could quickly just load in some extra images. So just above those background ones, I will say ground image is equal to pygame.image.load and the image name is ground.png. So we'll load that in and just say convert alpha at the end. And then I'm going to need to know again the ground width. So the same as the background, I need to know how wide these images are. So ground image dot get width. I'm also going to need the height of this, which I'll explain in a second. So I'll say the height is equal to ground image dot get height. And now the function for drawing it is going to be very similar to the draw background, but in fact it's only going to be a little bit simpler. So we'll say draw ground. Again, it doesn't take any arguments and it doesn't have any depth to it, so it's really just one image. So I'm not going to need this for loop, but I will need an equivalent of this one because I need to repeat the ground image a few times. So I'll say for x in range 15. I'll go with 15 because these images are a little bit shorter than the background images. And I'll just say screen.blit ground image and I want to blit it so pretty much in the same way as above I'll say x multiplied by ground width and I have to subscribe subtract scroll from that I don't need a specific speed variable because it, the reason I used it here is so I could increase it each time but here I could simply fix that speed variable so I could just set this to 2.2 so this way it's going to be moving a little bit faster than the topmost layer here so that finishes off the x coordinate and then for the y coordinate well because i need to move this uh, to the bottom of the screen i actually need to take the screen height minus the ground height so all that's left is just to draw that function or sorry call that function here so it's a draw ground and if i run this now we can see the ground is drawn over and as i scroll the ground is actually moving a little bit faster than the rest i could even speed it up a little bit more so we could say 2.5 See if that's maybe too fast. Yeah, so you can kind of play around with these numbers and get something that looks realistic and, and gives you this nice 3D parallax effect. And that's pretty much all there is to it. So I hope you find that useful and thanks for watching.